Hare Krishna and Numata Jitan Rat Pranam all goes to Srila Prabhupada and Gurdain. Yes, so I welcome everyone in this Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. So today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam. So Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All good is to Srila Prabhupada, all good is to Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much Maharaj for your valuable association and time. Now I would like to hand over the call to you Maharaj. Thank you so much Hare Krishna. Okay, so we can put the verse on the board. Uh, Mataji Pavitra Are you well? Yes, Maharaj. I'll read the uh, Sanskrit and the translation. Can someone read the uh, purport? I can read the uh, Sanskrit. I know. I'll read that and the translation. We need someone to read the purport. Yeah, you just, I need someone for the purport only. I can read the purport, Guru Maharaj. This is Govardhan. Uh, no, let, no? One of the, let one of the people who are hosting the program do it. Sure. This is, it's their program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Nama Kamala. No, 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 no. Uh, Shamagori. Yes. You read the purport. Okay. Okay, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nama Kamala Kinjalka. Nisagamala Vasase. Sarvabhuta Vivesaya. Namo Yukshmasi Saksine. Translation. Dear Lord, the garment you have put on is yellowish in color, like the saffron of a lotus flower, but it's not made of anything material. Since you live in everyone's heart, you are the direct witness of all activities of all living entities. We offer our respectful obeisances unto you again and again. Okay, purport. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Shamagari Mataji, yeah. are you reading? Okay, yeah. Mataji. You, you want to read, you can read, Mataji. It's... No, no, Mataji, you please go no, ahead. No, you are hosting the call, na? so you read. Okay, Mataji, then I can read. So, Papad by His Divine Grace, Isi Bhaktivedan Swami Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai. In this verse, the dress of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His all-pervasive nature are described. The Lord puts on a dress that is yellow, but such a garment is never to be considered material. The garments of the Lord are also the Lord. They are non different from the Lord because they are spiritual in nature. The word Sarvabhuta Nivashaya further clarifies how Lord Vishnu lives in everyone's heart and acts as the direct witness of all the activities of the conditioned soul. Within this material world, the conditioned soul has desires and acts in accordance with these desires. All these acts are observed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 15.15. Sarvasya chaham hirdesha nivishto mataha smriti gyanam vapuhanam cha. I am seated in everyone's heart and from me come remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. The Lord is present in everyone's heart and he gives the living entity intelligence. According to the desires of the living entity, the Lord makes him remember or forget. If the living entity is demonic and wants to forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord gives him the intelligence to be able to forget the Supreme Lord forever. 
Similarly, when a devotee wants to serve the Supreme Lord, the Lord, as Paramatma, gives the devotee the intelligence to make progress in devotional service. The Lord directly witnesses our activities and experiences our desires. The Supreme Lord gives us the facilities to act in the way we wish. Thank you. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Um Militam Yena Tasma Shri Guru Veda Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapi Tam Yena Dutta Lai Svaya Mupa Padam Mayam Padati Swa Padanti Kam Uma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishtaya Dutta Lai Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Parvani Pachari Ne Nirvishesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya Dei Satari Ne Panchakalpa Tarubis Chakripa Sindhu Eva Chakritita Nam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnava Ne Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Bhavatananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. There's an interesting verse. Uh, it says that the Lord's garments and the Lord are non different, <clears throat> being spiritual in nature. So it's described in any pla other places in the Shastras that Lord Balaram serves the Lord in all five rasas, neutral ras, in dasya ras, in sakya ras, in vatsalya ras, and in madurya ras. So in, in uh, uh, neutral ras, or what is known as shanta ras, he serves the Lord by uh, being the Lord's bedstead, the Lord's umbrella, the Lord's shoes, uh, the Lord's artsy paraphernalia and the Lord's clothes also. So the clothes are actually an incarnation of Lord Balaram himself. Although he is the supreme personality of Godhead, he incarnates as the servitor Godhead in that category so he can serve Krishna in all different aspects of service, such as the different rasas. So in neutral ras, he also becomes the clothing of the Lord. This is very significant and very important to understand. The absolute nature of the Lord and how he manifests himself along with his, uh, what we say, paraphernalia, his dress. Uh, this is all part of the transcendental nature of the Lord. And therefore, as it mentions here, his garments, although yellowish in color, um, are not material in any sense of the word. <laughs> um, but the difference between material and spiritual, of course, there's two differences. There's the absolute principle of difference, and then there's the relative principle of difference, which becomes absolute in certain conditions. The absolute principle is that uh, in the spiritual realm, everything is non-different than the Lord in the absolute sense. When these uh, living entities manifest themselves in the material world, they also be can become absolute, but and they start with being relative, such as the paraphernalia of the Lord, the shoes of the Lord. Once they are given to the Lord and used by the Lord, then they take on their absolute spiritual nature. So this is, uh, this we have to see that when we have the deities, their clothes are just as good as they are. <laughs> uh, their shoes, their worshipful paraphernalia, all of these things are never abused, left unclean, uh, uh, what we say, not cared for in, in any sense of the word. Uh, they have to be seen in the same way. So that will bring about spiritual consciousness. If we see these things as being extra or just part of the Lord's uh, service, then 
we don't, we're not seeing properly and we may obviously treat them, these things in the wrong way. So this is important to understand the absolute nature of the Lord. Um, this is true in many categories of himself, such as his name, his form, his qualities, his pastimes, paraphernalia. And also, and even in the more relative senses, which are not relative, but we just use the word just for the sake of making a distinction, just like the spiritual master is also non different from the Lord. The uh, Tulsi is worshipped as good as the Lord. The Lord, uh, Lord Shiva himself gives a beautiful prayer. Um, uh, what is that prayer? Tadiyanam Samarchanam. Uh, hmm. He speaks to his uh, good wife uh, Parvati, and he's saying that the uh, the worship of Vishnu is the highest form of worship. The worship of his devotees are even higher than the worship of Vishnu. But he doesn't say devotees; he says in things relationship to the Lord. So the clothes of the Lord. The uh, paraphernalia of the Lord's service is also worshipable, just like the Srimad Bhagavatam, that is also worshipable, being an incarnation of the Lord in the literary sound. So we may not have that vision, but we must adopt that vision through accepting the words of scripture coming through the words of the pure devotees. And then we can start to develop that vision. Once we accept the words of the scriptures and act accordingly, then we can gradually see the non-difference of these things. It becomes a part of our own understanding and realization. Another part of this verse where the Lord of Srila Prabhupada in his purport uh, refers to one verse in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasya Chahamrdi Sani Visto Matir Pata Smitir Gyanam Ahoponam Cham. I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me comes Smitir, remembrance, Gyana, knowledge, and Apohan, forgetfulness. So uh, the living entity is not aware of this, but if you want to remember something, Krishna is in your heart. And if you want to forget something, Krishna will help you. If you want to develop some knowledge, Krishna uh, is the guide by which you can find and understand that knowledge. So the Lord is directly involved with the activities of the living entity. And this is the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which is known as the, uh, the principle of the highest form of yoga. So in that highest form of yoga, in that chapter, uh, the topmost yoga, these things are mentioned. So, and then Prabhupada wants to make the point from the opposite direction that if a demon or a materialist who are acting like demons, they want to forget the Lord, then the Lord will give them intelligence. Just like we wonder where these uh, atheistic and non-devotees get all their philosophy. They get it from the Lord. <laughs> they get it from the Lord. Why? Because that's what they want. And so the Lord helps them to understand what is not right, because that's what they want. He gives them their independence, and if they are enthusiastic to fulfill their desires, he, he shows them how to do it. So this is interesting. Uh, we find that many of the arguments of the non-devotees seem very convincing when you, uh, when you don't know the absolute principles of devotion. Some of them, these arguments sound so very uh, attractive and convincing when you listen to them. But, and then you might say, wow, that sounds interesting. But it's actually Krishna in the heart giving them the direction by which they can formulate these wrong theories. <laughs> Krishna is not out to convince anyone about himself by frustrating 
um, by, by taking away their independence. He wants Krishna, people, Krishna wants people to come to him voluntarily through the process of devotion. And therefore he's eager in that way. But he sets up the process in that way. But if a person wants to be independent, just like Krishna is Swarat, Swarat means fully independent. And the living entity is, has a particle of that independence. What is that particle and how does it work? Well, the particle is that we can, uh, because we are part and parcel of Krishna, we have some of his same qualities, not all of them, but 50 of the qualities that he has. But in those 50 qualities, he has them in full. We have them in partiality. And depending on the living entity, that partiality is to one or more degree. Some have more than others. So this idea of independence, he gives you. But the independent principle amongst all of the uh, qualities that the Lord has and the living entity also has, has another me a very important meaning. And therefore the Lord doesn't interfere with that because of this. And that is that ba bhakti or relationship with the Lord is based on love and love and love cannot be forced. Love has to come in a voluntary way. And then it's actually love. If it's forced, it is not love. It is some kind of blind obedience. Uh, Krishna is not so much simply having people follow him unless they actually have a, attraction for him. And that attraction is natural. People do adhere to God for different reasons, for material benefits, for material, for protection from material dangers, for fulfillment of material desires, for destroying uh, one's material enemies. Now, these are some of the uh, ways that people approach the Supreme Lord. So he allows that independence to, to develop. Of course, when a person becomes a devotee, they pray, my dear Lord, this independence of mine sometimes causes me to act or think in the wrong way and it, may, it, may, it pushes me farther away from your lotus feet. So please, please take away my independence and give me only the shelter of your lotus feet. But that's different. That's a prayer of, uh, of devotion. That's a prayer of, hum prayer of humility. That's the prayer to, uh, in desperation, to get back to our, our constitutional position. So the devotee of the Lord will not do that, but he, he sometimes he appears to do that by becoming a very big part of our life and frustrating anything we want to do that causes us to act independent of him or to do something that will lead to us becoming independent of him. So he, uh, he, he's especially inclined to the devotees to remind them that this is what you don't want. You really want me and you've shown that before, but now I can see you're somehow or other you've fallen off the standard. So then Krishna will help us to get back on the standard. But this verse, Sarvasya Chaham Rudi Stani Visto is very significant because it just shows how much the living entity is controlled. And Paramatma is the controlling factor. Paramatma is the supreme feature of the Lord which exists within this material world in the hearts of all living entities. Krishna did, agrees to accompany us throughout our sojourn life after life. And this is really amazing. When you say God is verse merciful, then we can understand uh, a great principle of mercy. And that is that no matter what species of life we're in, even below the human beings, the Lord is there in the heart of the living entity. It could be in the insects, it could be in the birds, the trees, the plants, the beasts. Whatever form of life 
is there, the Lord is situated as the super soul within the heart. He always is there and always accompanies his uh, part and parcel. So that's the manifestation of his supreme mercy. He never leaves us. We consciously blot out his existence simply by not acknowledging our relationship with him or a position in relationship to him. But he's not like that. He's very enthusiastic to give us whatever we need to come back to him in loving devotional service. So when people say God is merciful, but this is an indication of how merciful he is. He even comes personally to bring us back. That's special, special mercy. Okay, so these are some of the points, the main points that are on this particular verse. So we'll see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for enlightening us. Thank you so much, like how merciful Lord is for uh, telling us so that we can remind us and uh, we can uh, uh, see his mercy in each and every step. So thank you so much, Maharaj. So now I will request devotees, if they have any questions, they can go ahead. Thank you. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj, uh, I have a question. Like, uh, Lord is so merciful, and uh, for uh, uh, means uh, having His mercy, sometimes He gives so many things uh, to you, and sometimes He takes away. So, uh, how do we understand when some something he takes away from us and we just lament for that and we think of that and so how do we understand this? How, we, how do we take this mercy of the Lord? Well, you know, we know it's the mercy of the Lord and therefore we have faith in the Lord. We have faith in the Lord that whatever the Lord does is, is good and it's good for us. So for some reason, it was taken away. Maybe we can't see it immediately, but if we have faith that, the, that it's actually the best thing, then in due course of time, we will understand why. The principle is that if we don't have complete faith in the Lord, when he takes things away, then we have some problems. Um, it's, a, it's simply a lack of faith in him. Or maybe we're just so much attached to the object that we took, he took away that we can't really understand why it happened. That attachment uh, overshadows our intelligence. But everything the Lord does is good. So we 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 should not uh, uh, endeavor for the things to come back. We we just stay on the mercy of the Lord. That's what we need to do. Yeah, that's true. But if they come back automatically without much endeavor, then that's fine. If it's some, what if it's you're referring to something material, like you lose some money or something, and then you feel lost, you made a bad investment, and it got lost, or um, I guess people think in terms of losing a loved one. If some person that we uh, are attached to and that person is taken away. You know, we, un we might understand that this, we 
this is the nature of the material energy. We have to lose everything anyway. <laughs> In due course of time, you're going to lose everything, including the body we have, too. That's going to be gone, too. So uh, why should... Therefore, loss and gain, devotees don't really put much uh, importance on that. They get something, they'll use it. If they don't have something, they don't worry about it. If they want something, then usually Krishna supplies it. And if he doesn't supply it, the devotee is still able to go on with his devotional service. Does that help? Yeah, yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Faith is just faith. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Gurudev. As you were uh, relating this beautiful uh, pastime of how Balaram becomes the paraphernalia of the, of the Lord and this description of this beautiful saffron color, I was remembering a very nice song that uh, my mother would always sing. It's very famous uh, Carnatic music song. It's called Krishnani Begane Baro. And in that, this description is Kashi Pitambara Kayalli Kolalu. That means you're wearing this beautiful saffron colored uh, silk uh, cloth from Kashi. And you're holding a flute in your hands. So it's a very beautiful description of the Lord in this song. And I was remembering that while you were giving this lecture. Thank you very much. Jai. Yeah. All these things are found within the culture. Many wonderful ways to glorify the Lord, glorify the Lord's dress. Vedic culture is complete. Hare Krishna Maharaj and Thank you so much for uh, telling us about the um, paraphernalia. It's just like uh, deities and, uh, you know, even the deities' garments are uh, should be um, should be respected, just like deities. And also, um, also the deity worship is, uh, means uh, if you are even the washing the, uh, washing the, plate of um, DTS, it just like doing the DT worship. So I just, I just remember the devotee who left the body um, few days ago, he was uh, doing the dishes, like he was washing the um, prasad, washing the boga plate of the Lord. So, and while doing that, he left his body. So it's like uh, he was doing the deity worship when he left. Oh, he was doing it in the temple? Uh, he was doing it at home. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, whether you do it in the temple at home, it's the same. Hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Yay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanvat Pranams. Um, Maharaj, I have one question. Um, you just mentioned about culture. So I was wondering uh, how important is cultural, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Everything. Empathy? Everything. Okay. Prabhupada, said, Prabhupada said, we are not a religious movement, we're a spiritual culture movement. Spiritual culture. Not the mundane Hindu culture, but the spiritual culture that mm -hmm. comes from India. The mundane Hindu culture, which is coming from the spiritual culture, which have remnants of the spiritual culture, also looks like it the same, but it's not. The spiritual culture is this principles that make up uh, the, pro the process of bhakti, along with the various things that are found in the scriptures. 
So within the scriptures, you'll find, you know, some of these essential things, just like, you know, Krishna, what's Krishna's favorite instrument? The flute. Krishna likes to play the flute. Now there are flutes in all countries. <laughs> so it's not that the flute is, uh, um, you know, just a musical instrument, but for Krishna, it's his main, one of his main paraphernalia, and it's actually a living being also. It's a pure living being, comes in the form of a flute. flute. So the spiritual culture, if you take the culture away, then you take the whole uh, external forms of worship away. So we need both the external forms of worship and along with the worship itself. Sure, Maharaj. Uh, this question actually arose because uh, some people feel that, uh, you know, for preaching in the Western uh, cultures, uh, you know, the external culture, uh, you know, like we speak of attire or how one appears, you know, maybe, for example, wearing a dhoti or things like that, maybe an impediment. So I was wondering, is that also part of our spiritual culture, Maharaj? Yeah, it is. But then again, you have to when it comes to preaching as it comes to worship worship means whatever we are whatever we're doing in the temples should go on according to the spiritual culture given by the by the spiritual masters by the authorities for the sake of preaching there is adjustment adjustment means to 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 adjust things according to time place and uh, what's the word time place and circumstance uh, Circumstance. There's another words, time, place, and persons. Okay. So when you're pre preaching to certain persons, you may have to adjust, um, you know, some of the external forms that we use in the temples in order to reach these people, right, to open up an avenue of communication. So that's okay, because Prabhupada writes about that in the seventh canto. When... Uh, and in the story of Prahlad Maharaj, when it says that Vaishnavas were sneaking in to the, uh, to the school of Harani Kashipu and uh, what we say, uh, what we say, uh, how was it? Uh, they were polluting Prahlad Maharaj with Krishna consciousness. So of course that wasn't true. Um, Harani Kashipu was still, still speculating why his son was acting like that. It couldn't possibly be coming for him. It must be coming to Vaishnavas in disguise. So taking that principle, Prabhupada writes in the purport that for the, for the sake of preaching, we can change our dress. Mm -hmm. But it's only done for preaching. It's not done in the temples or in the general worship services. We should keep that thing, that there. We should wear dhotis. We should wear proper, women should wear proper dress in the temples. Everything should be done according to the spiritual culture as given in our day-to-day -day worship. But preaching is a separate element, and we can adjust for that. So that distinction has to be made. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for uh, you know clarifying this so beautifully with reference. I'm so indebted to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I hope. Do we have anything else? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Dave, for um, your very wonderful lecture of Please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your divine grace. Um, I have a question with regards to attachments, um, with regards to um, this purport. Um, the Lord gives us remembrance and he gives us forgetfulness. And so um, it follows that 
to, with regards to attachments to increase one's um, chanting and to increase one's um, a hearing um, so that we have better facility, better remembrance of the Lord. Um, so in what other ways um, will help facilitate this transfer of one's um, attachment to material, to attachment to the Lord? Spiritual, yeah. It's like we have attachment to our friends and family members. We can just, we can just dump that at the same attachment to devotees. Devotees are the spiritual family. And Prabhupada also illustrated that in his own life, he left his family, but now he says he has a big family with so many children. So yeah, we can recreate the whole world that we are in, in the material sense, within the spiritual context, by simply connect, by connecting the same elements, but in a spiritual way. And actually, the spiritual is the source of the material. The material is simply a shadow reflection of the spiritual. Our friends and relatives, family members, are somebody that we just connected to by karma. That's all. Because of karma, we have, we're connected to these different people. So as karmas change, the connection becomes stronger or, or, or weaker, depending on the karmic. But our relationship with devotees is eternal. Once it's established, it becomes eternal. Just like when, when the deity, the deity is not eternal. But as soon as it becomes installed in worship, then it becomes eternally a worshipable form of the Lord. So in the same way, we should take these uh, attachments that we have for the external environment and just recreate them within the uh, spiritual environment. That's all. Friends, family members are one example. Food is another example. Um, music is another example. Um, there's also spiritual hobbies too. You know, like you might have a hobby. Hobby is something that you develop on your own. You like to do, so you then you can find spiritual hobbies too, like um, collecting information regarding uh, how many verses are there about Krishna's lotus feet in the shastras, or how many verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam are actually. Uh, giving allegories. Uh, I think that you know, there's one devotee, and actually he lives in Charlotte, uh, Subodhi Krishna. And many, for many years, he was going through the Srimad Bhagavatam and finding allegories of, you know, about Krishna. And the Bhagavatam is full of allegories. So I'm just using this as an example how you can take some little idea you want to do and make it into a little spiritual hobby like that collecting pictures of krishna or trading pictures of krishna in other words anything that you do in the material sense outside of the sinful activities can be done within the spiritual arena also and it's more fulfilling there because every the reason why everyone is everyone is together. We all have the same goal. In the material world, nobody is together. We're put together in relationships, but we all have different interests. And usually our interests are selfish. Everyone wants to somehow get something in whatever relationship that they develop for their own benefit. Hardly, very far, few that you find people give, get into a relationship just simply to please the other person completely. It may be 50-50 or whatever percentage, but nobody, but in Krishna consciousness, we don't look, we never look for what we can gain, but we can always see what we can give. That way the mood of giving makes up the whole spiritual environment. And therefore everyone's happy because Everyone simply try to give a gift to each other. 
become the servant of each other, become the well of each, of each other, become the friend of each other, become the, in one sense, the relative of each other. Because in one sense, there is a family structure that comes by way of a spiritual association. Srila Prabhupada is the father, or we might say for some, the grandfather, and our spiritual master is our father. And then we have brothers and sisters that are our, you know, God brothers and God sisters. It's a family. It's not some, some uh, you know, imposition that we've created just to sound good. No, it is actually a spiritual family. And once we go back to Godhead, we'll also be together with that same family again as we, as we meet in the spiritual world then the spiritual family will open up completely. So, yeah, so you can, you can take all these things that you see in this world and you can just connect it to spiritual uh, association, spiritual activities. Any Just other for comment? clarification, Guru Maharaj, whatever devotee relationships we form, which are very deep, meaningful, and uh, help us in our Krishna consciousness to improve more and more, those are the eternal relationships we will have in the spiritual world also. Is that correct? <laughs> You're trying to make everything sound very like, like some kind of material mathematics, right? No, one, and one, one and one is two, one, two and two is four. Here and now is there and after. Yeah. Don't try to do, do that with spiritual principles. <laughs> spiritual principles are wide, broad, expansive. Material is limited and fixed in a certain way. So in our relationship with spiritual would, would you have a loving relationship with all living entities, whether you've had that association with them in this world or not. But those that you did have an association with in this world, you may again meet them in the spiritual world. And you'll mm. remember, you'll remember that relationship you had once when you were down in this uh, you know, this material level. You'll be looking different than what you are now. So <laughs> that's for sure. Thank you, Krishna, for that. So we should not try to make uh, comparisons. We should try to understand things on the spiritual level. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. But it looks similar. But it's not. It's not exact in, its simil in every aspect of its similarity, but it looks the same. Here, relationships are built on selfishness. There, relationships are built on our relationship with Krishna. Generally, we can have selfless relationships here with devotees also, but that, that's something we need to cultivate and work on. If you study the lives of the Goswamis, you see how intimately they were connected. The associates of Lord Chaitanya, how, how much they had loving relationships with each other. It was very deep, very profound, and very complete because they were completely on the spiritual platform, although they had, they had bodies in this world and were living within the realm of duality.
Any other questions? Okay, if no one has any questions now, then we can now end the call here. Okay, Have thank we... you everyone for joining. Thank you so much Maharaj for giving your valuable association. So, Vancham Kalparu Vishyakirpa Sindhu Evcha Patita Nam Bhavne Bhyo Vaishyame Bhyo Namo Namah Anand Koti Vaishyamandh Ki Jai Shri La Prabhupad Ki Jai Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Thank you so much Maharaj Thank you Maharaj Thank you Maharaj Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Thank you for the class Maharaj Hare Krishna Thank you for the class Maharaj